Hey, what's happening, everybody? This is Robert the Leather Cowboy Muhammad right here at Premier Leather Crafters with another video. Actually, uh, this video here is a piece that I'm working on, actually. Um, actually, just putting something together. I did a video earlier up in the year about um, knowing what your tools can do. The purpose of practicing in this leather craft business, especially when you're buying new tools and you're, you're acquiring new tools, uh, you want to play around with those tools to actually, so you can actually see what those tools can do. Uh, a lot of times I'll experiment with new tools. Tandy just had a wonderful sale on where they had the tools like at $2.99, uh, which every year, if you're into this leather craft business, or if you want to get off into this leather craft business, well, that's one thing you should remember every year. Tandy has a tool sale every year for the Christmas holidays. And they used to be a dollar ninety-nine. This year they tacked on another dollar for two ninety-nine, which is still half off because a lot of their tools now are four ninety-nine, five ninety-nine, or whatever during the regular year. But you can uh, you could have bought those tools a couple of weeks ago for two ninety nine, and that's the prime time if you want to spend a quick forty bucks, a quick forty dollars is all you need, and you could have bought anywhere from from ten to fifteen new tools. So try to get yourself in the mind frame of doing that every year around this time of year is spending forty dollars. On tools now the, the craft the craft craftsman tools are they're not top of the line but they are enough to where you can hone your skills and your craft before you start going off buying like your Barry King um, your, your Linnell tools or some of your tools that a lot of your tools that's made from overseas even uh, you have tools as there's one guy named Sergey that makes his tools all his own tools man with brass ends beautiful work as far as the tools in very detail and you can do a lot with those tools that he has out but they run you like 40 bucks barry king runs you like 40 bucks uh sergey sometimes he'll have a sale on where he'll have tools for like maybe 15 and 20 dollars which when you look at the craftsman tools from tandy from two ninety nine regular price five ninety nine, and even their uh their uh the 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 premium craftsman tools or or um or the well the Tandy tools are probably like they're, they're like four or five four ninety nine five ninety nine, but then you have your pra your craftsman premium tools that they, they probably run you about at least ten bucks, sometimes fifteen bucks, which is still cheaper. Then your Barry King and your Linnells and your Sergey's, but don't get it twisted. Those guys' tools cost that much for a reason. When you're getting off into fine detailing on tools, especially your bevelers, that when they say a steep beveler, they actually mean a steep beveler. That thing is going to get right down there in between the cuts uh, on your carving work and it really make your leather craft carving pop when you're doing tooling with those guys works. Uh, but anyway, that's not the purpose of that. I'm not doing a plug in for Tandy or none of that stuff. I don't get paid from Tandy. Everybody know that. Tandy is just how I started. Tandy is kind of like the Walmart of the other crafts business. You can find everything that you need at Tandy. Some stuff is not going to be top of the line quality. Some stuff is not. I think Tandy would even agree with that. But to get you familiarize with your tools and a lot of the tools and products that Tandy has they last I still have some Tandy Tandy tools that I even acquired from my father who was doing leather craft work in the 70s so don't get it twisted Tan, don't sleep on Tandy tools. Tandy tools will last. And I even have some tools from Tandy. I've been doing this business for 22 years, and I still have some Tandy tools that's still in good shape. And it's all about how you take care of them and how you treat your tools, too. Prime example. Prime, primary thing right there. But today, I want to show you guys how to take your basket weave stamp. I'm going to come up with this pattern is not really a new pattern or a pop. I mean, it's it's starting to reinvent itself and it's starting to become very popular again amongst 
leather crafters, especially now in the Leathers Guild. I see a lot of newer crafters that um, they're using this basket weave stamp in a lot of their designs and layouts. Now, if you're doing, uh, it doesn't really matter. I like, I'm fond of the basket weave, um, just doing a traditional basket weave stamp, uh, like in my, in my wallets. You guys can see this is the basket weave stamp and how it can lay out and do for you. This is the, the, the traditional way a lot of crafters are using these now is with the uh, just regular basket weave. But the technique or the design that I want to show you guys, and a lot of people don't even know what the proper term for this is. Some people call it the arrowhead stamp. This is not a stamp that you can just buy and it creates this pattern. You guys can see it kind of gives it that arrowhead type of thing. This was all done with this little jewel right here. And it's all about how you lay it out. So what I'm going to do, and, and this is really how I built my business in the beginning stages of it, because that's the one thing that I was taught. Learn your tools. Learn what not just the basic uh, work of the tool, as in the basic basket weave of the two. I mean, and this is cool to learn how to do your basic basket weave. But, but also learn how you can take that same tool and create another shape and a, another design with the same tool. So now if I am a seller or if you guys are going to be off into selling this for a profitable business, now you have two designs with the same stamp. This is the beautiful part about leather crafting. You can take one tool and there'll probably be other videos that I will be making to where I show you how to do another, another design with this very same tool. So your tools will pay off in the long run when you start buying them because the one price, and I think back in the days I paid, uh, this might was, well, uh, it was pretty much in my earlier years. I think I probably gave, so we want to say about 20 years ago, and it's still good. The, the deafness in it is still good. You guys can see that. It's not worn because, one, casing your leather plays a big part in wearing out of your tools as well and getting the proper mallet making sure you're not mushrooming that head. Now, the one great thing I love about Tandy is Tandy gives you a guarantee on all of their tools. So if anything happens to this tool, if it warps or if it bends or if it's a mushroom, all you do is take it back to Tandy and they'll give you another one. Great thing about Tandy. So even at $5.99, that's a great investment in this tool right here is about 20 years old. So 20 more years down the road, if they haven't discontinued this, that's the only thing with Tandy. Tandy will discontinue a tool in a minute. But if you can... Uh, by the time this does wear out or whatever case may happen, you know, if they haven't discontinued, I could take it back and get a new tool. But now let's get off into how we come up with this so-called arrowhead stamp, which is very, very, very simple. And the most of it, as in any leather crafting work, your prep work. Is what sets you up to do great tooling work. Now, again, this is all this is out there for you guys who are starting out new into this leather business. For you guys who are out there who are trying to master or, or, or get a better hold on your tooling work. Now, uh, I've already taken some provisional steps uh, in getting this done. I've already cut my belt blank out. You guys can already see that, and I've already duct taped my back portion of this, my back piece of this. Uh, didn't cut enough tape off, but that's okay. Uh, I already duct taped, and just a quick review. The reason why we duct tape the back of our leather 
is so that when we start to do the tooling work, the duct tape will actually keep the fibers of the leather together. It won't make it spread. You understand? So this is why we go, that's one of those little hidden jewels about leather crafting is duct taping the back of the, the flesh side, the flesh side of your, your leather. And it, the duct tape keeps that, keeps those fibers and keeps your leather from spreading as you're tooling. So already, I've already done that. I've already put me a, a little small uh, stitching border edge around the outside. That's just one that I'm going to do um, because I, I think when I get ready. Now, this is what we're going to do today. I'm, what I'm going to do today is actually the traditional leather craft two-part or two-piece belt. So I have uh, eight ounce, eight ounce leather belt blank here. And what I'm going to do after that is I'm also going to contact cement and stitch a 1.5 ounce to the back of this. Now, uh, no, 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 I think I got to tell you guys wrong. This is not eight ounce. This is, um, yes, this is eight ounce, eight ounce right here. Because with the two pieces together, the 8 and the 1.9 is going to create, in total, in actuality, a 9.5 ounce belt. So, a lot of your customers will be looking for thicker belts. For some reason, they, they have been trained and conditioned that a two-piece belt is better because it's thick and they want that, that good, thick feel in their hands and it just makes them feel like they're going to have it a long time but that's nothing new you can do the same thing if you just increase the weight of a one piece belt to just say a 10 uh, or an 11 uh, I could have bought a 10 ounce uh, high and still made a one piece belt but the great part about it is since this belt is going to be tooled all the way across, I'm going to stamp and initial the name on the 1.5 side, which is the interior part of the belt, to give it that personalized, uh, uh, that personalization. That's the word that I'm looking for. And then there's also enough room for me to stamp my maker's mark on the inside. So, and that might be another reason why crafters still do a two-piece belt. Is because on the interior part of it, uh, if I just left this raw on the flesh side, you could I couldn't stamp my maker's mark there. So, and not to take away from the 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 grain side of the belt after the tooling side of the belt, not to take away from that, I wouldn't want my maker's mark to 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 draw attention away from that. It's kind of like if you got a brand new Porsche and then somebody walks up with a a a, a, a rattle can and they just put one dot on a brand new Porsche, you know, regardless of how beautiful the car is, people's eyes are going to automatically draw to that one spray spot. So that's why I, I don't, uh, a lot of crafters may not put their maker's mark on the grain side. They'll do a two-piece belt and stamp it on the interior part because nobody's going to see that part. So except for the person who's wearing it. But now let's get off into this. We're going to create this pattern on this belt and I'm going to show you guys how to do that first in the prep work this is a traditional 1.5 or one and a half inch belt width in width one and a half inches wide this way thickness width and what I done I took my uh, my measuring tape and I marked off the uh, my the halfway point in between end to end which is 0.75 inches that's the halfway point in a 1.5 belt or width and then I just set up several little dots down the interior part of the belt and then I've, I've taken my straight edge my ruler and then I draw that line that you guys see that's all the way down the middle of the belt now the next thing that I've done <clears throat> which is very key if you guys can see this middle bar right here in the middle of that tool right there I set that middle bar right on top of split this way uh, let me see if I can get this right okay I set that middle bar right there on the halfway mark there you go just like that and I stamped it in there just like this 
That's what you want to see, ladies and gentlemen, that halfway bar, this halfway mark right here. Now, the reason why this is right here, even though it's on the uh, the grain side of the belt, this is where my, my belt tongue, my buckle tongue is going to come through the belt. So this part right here is going to be cut out. So and then it'll go into the traditional fold. So once you fold that, nobody will see that cross bar right there like that. Nobody will see that. That's the best way for you guys to see it. You can see that middle tooth right there in the middle. I set that right on top of the line. So now, uh, but this is going to be the folded part of the belt. So nobody's going to see that part. And then you take your tool and you go from, you match the ends up, that's end to the point of the line. And you hit make a, make a uh, nice little whack right there. And then you do the opposite thing on the opposite side of that line with the same, and this starts your point. This starts that arrowhead effect right there. So now I'm going to stamp this a few more times while my leather is still cased pretty good. And I'm a, hopefully this won't fall so you guys can see this. Let me actually move my cord behind that. So you guys can see. I don't know if that'll hold up there too well. Uh, let me kind of tighten that a little bit. Uh, let me get situated with my camera here, ladies and gentlemen. Hopefully it won't take too long so we won't have to worry about uh, time on the on the video. Let me get this set back up on my tripod. I think you guys can see that. Now what I'm going to do here, I'm just going to line this up right with the existing line on the exterior part. I'm going to line that up. And I'm gonna put my other point back on the line. And we're gonna take a hit with that one. And we're gonna do the exact same thing on the opposite side. Actually, this might be better for you guys to see it. And you wanna take your time and make sure that you get this lined up as close to perfect as possible. One, because when you get ready to um, Start to tool this thing all the way down and then to finish it and complete it. You want everything to be lined up as close to possible as uh, as close as possible. Simply because you don't want your arrows to be thrown off or you don't want your, the flow or the direction of your piece to be thrown off. So we're going to just keep going all the way down the interior part of this belt. Taking your time. I mean, uh, taking your time. The, this is the most crucial part because the everything on the outside of the belt is just fill in. Now, this is kind of hard for me to do because I'm kind of, I want you guys to see this on the camera. If I didn't, wasn't trying to record. And you can even go all the way down just one side if you want to. Go all the way down. I wouldn't recommend that. Um, as for me. Because I can focus and concentrate on making sure that my arrow is straight. Uh, but if you feel that you're comfortable enough, no, scratch that. Don't even worry about that. Do both sides of the line. Now, here's something else that's key. And I want you guys to understand this right now. Um, if this belt is going to be black. So that's why I did my line so bold down the middle. Because of the simple fact that nobody's going to see that line. Bill, because the, the belt is going to be black and nobody's going to see that line. Now, here's the thing. Well, hey, cowboy, what if I wanted to do this in a brown? Of course, you wouldn't put your line in a dark color. You probably want to go with a, a me mechanical pencil that has a nice soft lead, uh, a 1.5. A uh, millimeter lead. Uh, I think you guys can see that. There it is, right there. Uh, a my nice mechanical pencil with a 1.5 millimeter lead. Nothing real heavy to where when you draw your line down the middle, it'll just be a faint little line going down that. Um, some crafters, you might even want to be able to use your wing divider. So you can actually 
uh, unscrew that, spread your wing divider out, and then that'll give you that 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 nice line just to scribe down the middle. Not too deep, because if you're going to tan uh, or stain this, or if you're going to antique this a light color, you don't want that line to reveal your secret of how you make that perfect arrow going all the way down the uh, the length of the belt. That's just a quick tip right there. Mechanical pencil, if you're going to do this, any other color besides black. Now, you might can get away with this on a dark brown or dark, dark brown belt, but anything light that's going to be light, uh, or if I was going to antique the middle part of this arrow where I want that to pop in the belt, or if I want to antique the entire belt, and then come back and put a nice antiques paste inside of the uh, the, the stamping parts of it. That'll make the, the raised portion or the natural portion of the belt pop. But uh, you want to use a mechanical pencil and scribe a very fine line. Not even press down heavy. You just want to scribe you a line that you can see it. And then that way, when it's a finished product, your customers will be like, wow, how did you get that all even all the way down the whole entire piece of the belt? So let me uh, put a couple of more stamps on here just to give you guys the logist of how this pattern came about. And you can pretty much see how this is going to go. And you just keep repeating the process all the way down. Now, can you guys see that? That's how we make that, that pattern. Just like that. All right. That we fell apart, ladies and gentlemen. You want to forgive me for that? Uh, I've been wearing my tripod out something serious. And I'm trying not to make you guys sick by doing a whole bunch of moving around. Uh, There we go. I think we got it. There we go. All right, we're back on point. So you guys can see that's how the pattern starts, and it'll continue all the way down. Now, um, when you get this finished, the way to go back and fill in all of your exterior part of your border is. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take a camouflage tool, or no, I, I see a meander tool in my, my head right now, which is, this is a, a meander or mender tool, however you want to pronounce that. And you see that flat edge is going up right against my border edge. And I'm going to stamp this down all the way down the side of it, and it's going to fill in all of those open ends. Now, even if you want to tighten that up, because some places this meander tool is going to skip some of the the tooling work but the way to tighten that up is and i'm going to show you just a quick fix the way to do that is uh, let me see if i can get this to angle right but the way to the way to do that is what i'm going to do is i'm going to use half of my tool and i'm going to line this up with the edge and i'm going to lean that tool in a little bit and I'm just going to give it a nice little love tap. Now this will allow me, I'm not stamping hard, I'm just filling in. So, and it should end like so. This way it goes all the way to the edge. And you can see how some of the tooling work is fading a little bit. That's from that leaning the tool just a tad. Now, when I come back with my mender tool or meander tool or however you want to call that. And this is just to give you guys a little short idea. And I could have done this on a scrap piece. But since I'm already doing the work for a client, I, I figured that it would be just a good idea to go ahead and do it. But I'm just going to show you guys. Boom. Now you see how that covered that up on the end. And it all fades down into my mender tool. Now, if you don't have a meander tool or a mender tool, let's turn this back up so you guys can see me. If you don't have that meander, it's M-E-A-N-D-E-R. That's how it's 
spelled, but uh, depending on how you want to hold your mouth, meander, meander, it, I don't have any idea. Uh, but if you don't have that tool, you can take a regular camouflage tool. Uh, the starburst, some people call it the starburst, some people call it a fan, but it's technically a camouflage tool. And that camouflaging with these lines right here, it will absorb all of the lines from your basket weaving tool. And then that's a good one. That's it. That, this tool does exactly what is named camouflage. It camouflages all the end work that's just left completely raw. So I hope this guys gave you, uh, I hope that this video gave you guys enough to get you started. Uh, you can always uh, drop down in the comments below with any questions that you might have. I'll answer those questions. Uh, as soon as you guys post a question, I get an email that tells me, hey, look, so-and-so asked a question. Uh, but, and I'll answer those questions as quickly as I possibly can. I'm pretty much on my emails every day. Um all day some cases uh but you know this will get you started so you have a new design that probably nobody and i don't i don't know if anybody's ever showed you guys how to make that pattern without buying the books so uh i feel if you've already bought the product if you already bought the stamps and the tools you know you may as well Somebody may as well drop you some knowledge and jewels for free. You know, sometimes it's always good to pay it forward. Somebody paid it forward to me. Well, I, no, I take that back because I actually had to pay for it. But to, to give it to you guys to continue this craft that we have out here, that's a dying craft. There's not too many of us left. Uh, but to continue that on, somebody needs to come out and just say, hey, look, this is how crafters make this particular stamp. Uh, uh, or how to make this particular tool do this particular design. So as you can see, it's going to end just like this. You can see the, how the, the, the arrows or the points are going one way, and then it goes back a different way, then it goes back this way, then it goes back. Beautiful when it's completely done. Even on this, you see how we got to the end and use that meander tool to cover up the edges of it? Oh, skip one right there. So we have to go back and fix that with, with my modeling spoon. But it'll absorb all of that. It'll take care of all of that. So, now, uh, hey, I hope this helped you guys out. Oh, here it is right here. This is the prime example of how that, that camouflage tool, even on the basket weave, you see how it gets to the edge? And you can take that camouflage tool and go all the way around that piece, and it will cover up those open raw ends of the basket weave step. So, hey. That's how you do it, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you guys for chilling with me these 28 minutes. And I hope that helped you out. Um, as always, grind it, grind it, grind it until you find it. Um, keep the hustle going and play around with your tools. And it's so it's such a great thing because you can actually take a tool that even though the tooling, the, the tool will do one particular design. If you learn, keep mastering and playing around with that tool, you can make that tool actually make the leather itself create another shape which gives you another design. Uh, I'll do go into another video about that later on. But hey, as always, love you guys. Keep it, uh, keep it grinding, and I'll see you on the other side. Peace.